All right, so now kind of the second step in this process is you have gotten some brainstorming done. You kind of know, well, you know, you've gathered some resources. So in the second process, you're really starting to gather more resources and you're starting to kind of narrow down what do you want your question to be for your project and your in inquiry based learning. And you want to start outlining your unit. Um, Everybody does it different ways. I'm a big fan of backwards design, um, starting off with the assessment, um, having your standard and going backwards from there, like what you want to be able to kids to do. Um, you can, there's numbers of different ways to do this. A lot of times for a lot of people just kind of getting everything down on paper, kind of like this, and then being able to go through and being able to move it and arrange it to get a final product is another way. Um, having a timeline is really helpful about what you're going to be doing each day. I highly recommend that. And in your template for your project, you can have a order of lessons, like a schedule that you're going to do. Um, having a list of supplies, um, but really just getting everything down on paper. Okay. How do you want to outline it and how do you want to learn and having kind of your central question. So for our question for my project based, one is how can we increase voter turnout in our community? And so that's our guiding questions for the kids. And that's something you want to make sure that is really apparent to the students as well. So that's for project based learning, kind of how I, we're gathering resources, gathering things, and then kind of narrowing it down, picking what our central question is going to be. And just because you pick it, maybe as you go through the finalized, process as you're really figuring out what you want to do for your assignments or as part of your unit it's okay to go through and change your question again be like oh maybe I need a broader question or maybe I need it more narrow for the kids so remember it's always flexible in these first stages we're just gathering things and, and putting things together and trying to get a workable outline for um, Jill Hill it was very much that kind of process too. We had all of these resources. Um, we found what this one resource that was just really good is this johill.org. And what really kind of prompted my uh, partner and I for Utah cities, it was looking at this page and it talked about like the man and the myth behind Joe Hill and how he became kind of this like bigger than life image. And there's lots of conspiracies and myths tied with him. And I mean, just really huge things. Um, there's quite a few songs. Um, I showed some of the songs to my students. He was also a very famous songwriter for the Wobblies. So lots of um, this page just sparked so much interest with us that we were like, Hey, this is what we should be kind of be our center is was Joe Hill guilty of this crime or not? Or was he framed because he was a unionist? And so that's what, um, the trial of Joe Hill, did he commit murder? murder sorry did he commit murder or was he framed and that was kind of our question for that and then we started kind of outlining things like okay what kind of product do you want the kids to do so like here we have all the information that we found on this page as well um we also had him look at a biography there's a map um, and then we started kind of outlining, okay, what, how do we want to organize this information for the students? How are they going to take all this and break it down? And that's the kind of things that you want to think about. Okay, we've been talking about evidence, um, using evidence to back up a claim, okay, breaking down evidence. So some of these things, that's what we were thinking about is how, what do we, what kind of product do we want? The kids to use and how do we want them to take all this information from the trial and break it down so those are some things to kind of be thinking about okay you have your question now how what do you want the kids to do and with um, inquiry based learning you know you want it to be and project based you want it to be open-ended in a sense but kind of what are some guiding things along the way and um, I guess it should also include with project based with our project base, the kids could really come up with any project that they wanted to help increase voter turnout in their community. And um, it was really, really cool, the different things that they came, 
they came up with. So you can get some really good results. Um, my students loved the Joe Hill theme because I had kids going home <laughs> looking up how distances between places on the map and how um, real time of uh, timing of events and everything so you kids really get engaged with this so that's something else you want to keep in in, in mind as you're doing this that kids really do enjoy these types of lessons